Ayan from Rambam, and uh, my mentor in this case was Dr. Guranik, the head of uh, chest imaging at Rambam. Our patient is patient L. She's a 45-year-old woman who had a persistent cough over a few months, and uh, no prior medical history that we knew of. Uh, working at a dry cleaning, smoking, smoking 30 pack years, and uh, the only re no relevant surgical history. Um, chest radiograph that she did, the ambulatory chest radiograph shows around the uh, opacity, with, it would, <coughs> which is uh, homogeneous and uh, relatively smooth borders. She later did a chest CT, again ambulatory chest CT, that showed a lesion uh, in the right upper lung. Um, Inside the lesion, there are hypodense areas and the borders are lobulated. Uh, what we can see, well, most probably due to the hypodense area within the lesion, is that it's necrotic inside it. Uh, outside, alongside the lesion, there was a pulmonary, subpleural pulmonary nodule, and another one in, in, in the left lung. Um, after having that chest CT uh, in the community, an ambulatory chest CT, uh, a few days later she arrived to the ED at Ramba with uh, the same persistent cough and uh, a new complaint about leg pain. Physics, uh, physical exam was unremarkable um, and an ambulatory bronchoscopy that she, she had was uh, non-diagnostic, nothing uh, important there. Um, cells were not so the, the clinical plan, they thought, was, was all towards uh, malignancy because there was no other anamnestic or physical exam data that would suggest otherwise. She had, uh, a few days later, she had that uh, PET-CT. On the PET-CT, we can see that there's the uptake in, in that lesion, uptake in the subpleural nodule, and uptake in the mediastinal lymph node. We can also see that there's an area without uptake in the middle of the lesion, which is again hypodense, again suggesting probably uh, a necrotic area, most probably. The, the change uh, from, the, from the previous exam is that the lesion grew significantly, uh, an air bubble appeared within it, and even um, the, the subroval nodule changed. And it's a matter of days, it's 12 days before from the first CT to the PET CT. So the question arose, imaging wise, the question arose whether it is malignancy that developed so fast, changed so rapidly, and developed a cavitation or necrotic area uh, so rapidly. Um, the, the imaging questions fr from that raised the differential diagnosis, which was um, that didn't put malignancy at the first place. Although the clinicians thought at that point that malignancy was almost the only solution to her problem. She had no uh, visible weight change and anamnestically at that point there was still no other data that could suggest otherwise. Um, as one of the thoughts of seeing a cavitary lesion within the lung, um, so one of the thoughts is, is uh, vasculitis or granulomatosis and based on an article from uh, uh, radiographics, uh, we know that the, the pulmonary manifestations of uh, granulomatosis with polyangitis, which was formerly known as Wegener's, uh, includes pulmonary nodules and masses that tend to cavitate, change, tend to have changes in their diameter, change rapidly, are waxing and waning, and involve other involvement. But what argues against us is that there was mediastinal involvement and lymph node. The article indicates that uh, there might be mediastinal involvement in, uh, in GPA, and, but it's rare and reactive. So we were still uh, with a differential diagnosis of a cavitary lesion and a few other nodules in the lung. They changed rapidly, necrosed rapidly, um, and she was scheduled for a, a, biopsy, a CT guided biopsy uh, a few days later. Two days before the city guided biopsy, she uh, again arrived to the, to the ED at Rambam. Um, clinical presentation, cough, joint pain, uh, morning stiffness, physical exam showed uh, necrotic areas in the toes, 
um, new uh, renal insufficiency in the lab, and on ultrasound, enlarged kidneys with a hyperechoic parenchyma may, that may indicate a new parenchymal disease. Um, a clinical course, once she was admitted to the hospital due to a clinical difficult situation, you can appreciate here that the creatinine graph, this is her ED visit, this is the, the visit before. Um, during her course, she developed uh, also diffusive viral hemorrhage, she was intubated, glomerular nephritis, skin biopsy, from the necrotic areas, uh, came back with leukocytoplastic vasculitis and Sianca was positive. Um, this, this is uh, during her hospitalization, which was uh, a difficult course when she arrived to the ED the second time with the, the renal insufficiency, uh, as you probably understood from the subtle hints, um, Wegener's or granulomatosis with polyangitis was diagnosed and she was started on uh, steroid therapy and immunosuppressive therapy. Um, a few days later she developed um, diffusal viola opacities, uh, decrease in uh, hemoglobin, which was very um, significant. This is a, a, the exact day of this uh, chest radiograph, and uh, endemoptysis. So all the signs of diffusal viola hemorrhage. Um, a CT done during the hospitalization a few weeks later, once he was intubated, shows that the lesion that we saw in, in the right lung came cavitated, there's an air fluid level there, and um, the leftovers, the reticular um, opacities, that show um, the, the leftovers of uh, the futile oral hemorrhage that was there two weeks before. Um, in terms of criteria of the, of the ACR, the other ACR, the rheumatology ACR, um, she had uh, all the criteria needed to be diagnosed as, uh, as GPA, uh, including an MRI that she did during her hospitalization that showed uh, um, nasal mucosal thickening and uh, uh, sinusitis involvement of the um, nasal cavity. And um, after the few weeks of the hospital at the end of her stay, this is her last or just before last chest radiograph that shows that Within uh, a month and a half after treatment, she recovered almost completely from her uh, diffusal viral hemorrhage. Her kidney function came back almost to normal. And there was improvement in her hemoglobin levels and the lesion in the right upper lung almost completely uh, was absorbed and disappeared after treatment.